Hi guys. I'm sitting here on the roof of my carport. It's exactly seven years after I have installed my first PV system. That PV system was my off-grid system. You can see some parts of it here on this room. The main part is on the other roof there. And after seven years, every single component of that system is still working perfectly. All panels, the all-in-one inverter and also the battery, which still has a remaining health of around 80%. After I made the off-grid system, I have added numerous grid tie systems and finally also a hybrid system. Two of the uh, grid tight systems have paid off already in full and some others will do uh, this year. As you know, in addition to the off-grid system battery storage, I also made my DIY battery completely from the scratch about five years ago. That was the time when most people soldered 18650s together into battery packs. Since then, of course, a lot of things changed. Many things became totally easy. You can nowadays just go and purchase any uh, battery and inverter system as you want. Just connect a few wires together and you can run your house completely from the sun. In today's video, I want to take the time and kind of look back to the beginning until now and see what actually is really at the end important to me and what actually was not or is not so important anymore. This is of course very individual and it is a very complex and large installation which I have here. So this you have to of course keep in mind. If you ask me what is the most important thing I care about my energy systems here, what would let me drop everything and feel like I'm walking on nails and I have to change that situation. But that would be system downtime. You know, especially if you make something by yourself, you know every part of what you have built up. You will quite easily find out what the problem is if there is a downtime. And these are then the moments when I immediately stop everything else and just have to go and fix the issue. How much downtime did I have in these many years? Really not much. The off-grid system actually was never down. The grid tight systems, also just parts of it, maybe for months because I have not been here and could not fix it, but the problems were never really big. Most of downtime came from the battery, of course, the DIY battery. But there, it's always just partial downtimes also when, for example, a charge or an inverter fails. And that still does not mean that all the system is down. Does system downtime have actually something to do with equipment, like if it's from a brand or not? Well, you know, my very next important thing I care is actually to build up everything with equipment, which has a very good value to the money. And Normally, that will not be the absolutely brand equipment. Tier 1 equipment, how it's mostly called, is mostly expensive, much more expensive than then. Uh, what's the next? The Tier 2 equipment. Tier 2 equipment are not so well known brands, brand names, but still, when it comes to standard grid tie equipment like panels, grid tie inverters and also standard off-grid equipment. Tier 2 is what I mostly go for and this has a much better 
value uh, to the money. Does the equipment fail because of that much more often? Absolutely not. My regular equipment did not fail in seven years, none of it. The only failures I have is this specialized equipment which I need here in my power wall and this is more or less uh, completely no-name stuff, right, like the sun inverters and the chargers. But still here, other than the inverters and a few breakers, I did not have any equipment failures at all. Let's talk about monitoring. Even that most of my inverters do have built-in Wi-Fi, or at least you could use a Wi-Fi dongle to run it. I actually do not monitor on inverter level. The reason is I have 11 inverters here on my property and the only thing what an individual inverter monitor ring would tell you is similar to what you would see on this screen now. It is just telling you the weather. And that's it. Why is it telling you the weather? Well, you would have a bell-shaped solar curve during the day and everything what's not bell-shaped is different than perfect weather and that's actually all. The only thing that I'm interested in monitoring and this data I'm acquiring at my power wall directly at the entry point of the grid is the total energy flow and this energy flow is telling me how far I am away from the zero line, do I export or do I import power and this is then the base for the decision of building maybe another solar array or get another battery whatever. So every new addition is this 3000 watts which I installed last year must make sense and it has to provide power at a time when I usually maybe don't have as much. In this case it's the hybrid system, it has a battery so it's anyway uh, feeding into the storage. What do I not care so much about? And these are usually environmental issues like shade, dust and temperatures. I can't do much against it anyway. If I would clean panels after one week they would be full of dust anyway. So it's better just to wait for rain like now. I also cannot manipulate temperatures of course. When it's hot it's hot and it's always hot and shade if it comes from posts like this one I can do much about it anyway. But what I can of course do is I can try to avoid having shade from trees and this here in the tropics is of course also very important because all the trees are growing very quickly. So this of course requires trimming and sometimes also removing of trees like I did now recently in this corner and yeah, it will be replaced with some smaller plant there. One other thing I do not care much about is aesthetics. Most of my PV systems are anyway just cardboards so I don't care if this cardboard is DIY built like I do it usually. I would of course not put any panels here in front of the door just because it's a good place. But I'm definitely not someone who would say that you are not allowed to see a solar panel on the roof and who will then go and buy a so-called solar roof so that you cannot see if this is a tile or a solar panel. This would absolutely be against my price against value directive which I have here. I don't have three times the money just to not see a solar panel. So this is absolutely not what I would in any case consider. But what I do care much about of course is using protective devices and that also requires the correct wiring of a solar system especially when it comes to connections to the grid. 
neutral to ground bonding using of RCDs GFCIs etc the protective device framework must always be working as it should because this is what your life is depending on what I would never do and never did is chasing for the last what in some something you have built you will get lost in the smallest details which doesn't make sense at all if you're missing a few words there and a few words there just go the simple way add another solar panel or if it's a little bit more you need add a few more solar panels and the microinverter and you will get that extra what you might have looked for instead of searching in your system where can you get a watt there and where can you get a watt there that doesn't make sense it costs unnecessary extra money and yeah as I said you will just solve the issue with much less hassle and cheaper also I must say I had the luck that I did not make a big mistake there's only one mistake I did and this has something to do with uh, using old used LFP cells in the battery wall but at that time I must say five years ago it was just the beginning of COVID I had to use my savings because I lost my job to build that system and yeah, those cells have been very cost effective but if I look back uh, they are just causing troubles and they will be replaced sometime in the future so if I could have avoided uh, that one then actually uh, there would have been no error made in how I did all the systems here the first systems already are paying off or have paid off after about six years so these were the first grid tie systems grid tie systems are always the most cost effective even if you don't get paid anything for your feed in into the grid or anything like I do I don't have anything but because we have the demand here inside the resort this is the simplest way to supply all the necessary energy here to our resort in future the outlook it will only of course uh, go uh, with storage systems the repair or improvement of the big power wall this will be the primary focus I could easily double up the capacity there in the space which I have and this would of course then also have the best bang for the buck that was it we are ending the video at the place where we started it at the seven year old off-grid systems so please leave in the comment what have you found out what are your experiences with your pv systems are you on a good path are you somewhere in troubles do you have to address anything to go forward okay so thank you for watching this video please like comment and subscribe to the channel and I see you next time.